Ote fatalo fatu le swa fo man malo yesu ke riso de ta yao. Ma lo le soi fo man wia, ma lo le soi fo mawa. Welcome in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We are so blessed and we are honored to have every one of you, especially those who are watching from YouTube and Facebook. Thank you so much for tuning in. And like I said, we're blessed and we're honored to have everyone worship with us today. Thank you so much for choosing the Christian Worship Center here in Anchorage. We celebrate together the love of God for you and I. Can you say amen? amen. So I pray that through this worship service, all of you, my brothers, my sisters in Christ, your fellowship with the Lord will be close and very intimate. Ole te tāra o nei aulotu i nei abia de nei sa unina pes pesenga da tu tu fa soa e upo le tua ole a ma fana e no ma fanga ole a na no le tua ole a tā tu a mata le te tāno ole vi inga ma fa ne tanga tu mo pe na u fio le tua Lord Almighty, I ask for Your Holy Spirit to come in this place. Fill our hearts as we celebrate you. Yes. As we glorify your name in this season of Lent. And the beginning of this spring break for our children. Amen. Lord, come through your Holy Spirit. Anoint everyone here and everyone that's watching. If I will, we know what to tell us. 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 O meu amor amado te faz ele a só e a mão vai só vir ainda. O nosso Jesus que vi só o a matar na ilha de São Mina. Let the church say Amen. Amen. Friends, if you are able to, I invite you to stand with me as we begin this service with a song. Great is His faithfulness. Sovereign, fortress, 
Great is his faithfulness. Can you say amen? Amen. Let's say it with five hours. Give the Lord for that two of more oil back. That was sweet. The Lord for the now will talk to you. I will hear my daddy in the Yasufo. The name of Yasufo. And may support my tower of my Lord and my father now. We praise God for his faithfulness. We will celebrate that faithfulness to our holy communion. For those who are new, for those who are watching as well, here at the Christian Worship Center, we celebrate the faithfulness of our God through Holy Communion. I've always said, this is not a something that you are about to receive. It is a someone. It wasn't a something that went on the cross and died for you and I. It was a someone. And that someone said, every time two or three come together, do this in remembrance of me. Those are the instructions from our Lord and Savior that we follow here at the worship center. Because if we don't do it, it implies that our worship is not complete. So come, my friends, let us glorify our Lord Jesus to our holy communion. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us. Full of grace and truth, we remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for this coming. Come, Lord Jesus. I feel my young man up here. All I am at of a tinuina, no poor in a bog mato, in a fire name of a contuma yard to me. Yes, so um, my mato to the ayah. My so um, my mato to fame way. Fapa here the name Sacramenta. Fapa here I told her to be a inna. All for Fulamana. Mato Mobile Oga Mamba and Tiki Yava. Alan Fatu, two white foul tunnel with fear. 
I pray that if anyone is feeling down, anyone who is sitting in the dark today, that through this sacrament, you show them the way, because you are a way maker. You are a God. You are our Lord who is faithful to his promises. Give them healing. Help them discover your peace. Help them receive your comfort in their hearts. These are our prayers. Together with the silent prayers of our hearts, we offer unto thee. In the powerful name of Jesus, I pray. Ulela mapo na fagatay na ay utato ni Jesus Kristo na yatamo ay arito o yafatay pa utato fatay mafatay o nutino na nay utof tofi fay usu yoto yoto fay na nay mga mafatmantuma yate na yatamo fay na ipu na wumo na lato na ay mafatay o na ipu na nay utfay na yafoule na utoto yoto fay na nay mga mafatmantuma yate Yes, Uma Tote Fein Wai. Wow, Uma Tote Ayane Areto, Mafein Rene Ipu, Tote Fai Lot Wai, and the Maliwa Yesu Kiriso, set your toy of your way over here. Now, Bede, I invite every one of you, my friends, believers in Christ. I don't invite you as a Catholic, I don't invite you as a local Kaiki, I don't invite you as a local assembly. I don't invite you as a denomination. I invite you as a believer in Christ. Come. Come and receive this free divine gift that our Lord has given for you and I. Tino Yesu Kiriso, what I know I am all of my mama and Tim Yelaba. Tanya Yanama Fatu, when Mole Ola Fatovaro, Yasu Kiriso. Friends, our Lord and Savior's blood, what our mobile life are about, to be in an
Kwasi na sila mai na di ye Omato fa tinu ina o koro ima A mata hi a ilme i fa moe moe Kwa sal ni ma mato te vini i a hi la mufio Fa manu ia tete ila o gerisiano Fa manu ia tete ila fa nao Ta maa ti na la to u ta ni a ina Le fa o le tana o e sal ni a hi a mo mato fa to tinu Mato mbao le fa maro loma Mato mbao fa miyana Jadi ini info fakta yang saya cek lah cok pelama. Orang Yesus, wahala cok ini fakta cuma. Let the church say Amen. Thank you, friends. You may be seated. So if you look at our program, it's time for the Word of God. Can you say the word of God? The word of God. Can you say the word of God? The word of God. You know, I'm standing up here and I, I feel like I have to say something because we have a superstar in our <laughs> in our church <laughs> today. We have uh, a celebrity. But Thank you again. So the word of God. We've completed our 40 days of purpose. Yes. And I believe you are now informed. And I pray that you're transformed as well. Because now you know the purposes of our life. Amen. Yes. According to Jesus himself. My From Jesus' own instructions, how he commanded and he commissioned us to, one, if you remember, our first purpose is to worship God. Yes. That's the first purpose of our lives. And that's the first purpose of our church. Second, ministry. That's your second purpose. Remember the word shape, how we broke it up. And you find your shape and you will serve God by serving others. Yes. Our third purpose, if you remember, is evangelism. How are you going to tell the name? The Our fourth purpose is fellowship. Yes. We're not supposed to go up on the mountain and hide out from the world. We're supposed to come together as a family. Yeah. We're supposed to mafuta fatasi. Yeah. And our fifth purpose we did last week is discipleship. Yes. Can you say amen? amen? And today, now, our new sermon series for the next three, four weeks Getting ready for Easter. Tato ta penama mole eseta. Can you say eseta? Ta pena ina ilo moto. Ta pena ina ilo ma fo fa wo mana tu katu ma umba lo wo mana malo wola ato. Ole ata tu fa ma natu ina ilo. Ne me o fo fo mi o ne fa ya Yesu ila sa eseta. Yes, amen. So before we go into Easter. Before we get to the, the powerful day yes. and our preparation to that Easter Sunday, Friday was the first day of spring. Can you say spring? spring. What does that mean? What does that mean? Well, it means no school for a whole week. Yay! <laughs> it means no school. And today, the last youth services as well. For two weeks, we're taking a break as well. So the teachers can take a break. You know, spring was one of my favorite seasons of the year. Not only because we get a free week off from school, but it also marks the nearing of summer. I love summer here in, in Alaska. And plants and trees that will grow and bloom and blossom, especially here in Alaska. We see so much life 
We see so much energy in God's creation. And I love watching things grow. There are already plants growing right now in our lobby, if you, if, if you noticed. Esther for him of your fear. And to to ina na aina when I was in Samoa. Ma mata mata ai. Get to to mo ha e. O la au to to ina. I've always been fascinated how things grow. And I've taken that interest and always strive to make myself grow as well. Always trying to make myself better. Always trying to make myself grow in the, in the hope that others will grow with me. My hour on my pillow, Tetano Hatu, by Yasre Hono, by Yasre Hono Sata to Tetano, Fa Boy Moena Limba, or to you, Tim Tafa, you for your limba, or the Tanata, Fa to a fine purpose, as I said. The fact that I hear you, and Taita in I know so you for the Nana, and Taita in I for you, Tato, a lot. Momoro tapo ima tapo ayatu de tua. Know and love God. On the lua, your your onama, your ministry, on tolu, no tala ima, your evangelism, on the fa, on the ba futa fatasi, your fellowship with your brothers and your sisters, and in church as well. Yes. Yeah, when Memo Morisa tapo tala no in the last week, a very oye maso discipleship. Oh, the territory. I pardon him a year, Nima. Let the fetter than the Yesu, Ya Ukuma Sani, they found out Samoa. Squally pardon ya, Memma. Then what will happen? You will inevitably grow. You will grow. A Tukuma, no silo, sorry, four fat their mamma, no mafo found, Malo Wola Fatino. You will grow spiritually. You will grow mentally. You will grow physically. So spring reminds me of that. It reminds me of, of we're growing in spirit, growing in our family, and growing in our church. So in many ways, friends, your life, my life, your family, my family, our church, even your career is very much a spiritual garden. So as we get ready for springtime, I want to ask you this question. What kind of seeds are you going to plant this spring? Spring. Well, if we take a look at our sermon notes, hopefully our ushers, Savili and Angel, pass out our sermon notes. And I apologize because it printed out the wrong way. Well, fire out of the secretary. We have the book of Mark, chapter 4. If I buy any day, the lamb on the issue. And if you want, you can read together with me. Mark 4, chapter 26, uh, verses 26 29. The kingdom of God is like this. Someone plants some seed in the ground. Then, during both the day and night, whether that person is awake or asleep, the seed is growing silently. Now the person who planted the seed can't see how it is growing because it's hidden under the ground. But in darkness, the soil is helping the seed to grow. First the plant sprouts through, then the tender stalk Years, then the stalk puts on buds, and finally the full head of grain or fruit appears. Then, when it's ready and ripe, the farmer cuts it because it's harvest time. Amen. So Jesus is saying here: if you want to understand the kingdom of God and you want to understand how it really works, the life that we're in, then you must understand. The principle of planting seeds. The principle of planting seeds. I feel mana malama in wina no lotto, or the malo le tua, and the tauna in mana malama mumua, mana malama le yawa oma, or the tono ina, or the lulu window fatu. A peona on a mind to spy here. Can you say amen? While I need a son of Tao, I got to go with for Tao Well, the first lesson we get from this story is one. 
God expects you to grow. God expects you to grow. I've always said, so se me lo ve el man na for the two of it's supposed to grow. El el pegalo, el el two mouths in the tassi, but it grows. Even you and I, people might say that they're not Christians. Well, we all die. We don't. We go to the all life of our can you say amen? amen? We graduate to eternity. Why do I say this? Because these are Jesus' promises. And that's why we do this every single time to remind you and I. Or you soon let us say, well, you know, so God expects growth in you, in your family, in your life, and in our church. Because growth, or the more bound there, it's the evidence of God's kingdom at work. So God expects us to grow up to spiritual maturity and does not want us to stay as babies. Can you say babies? babies. We don't have babies in there, do we? We have spiritual maturity. Can you say amen? amen? So the first question we need to ask ourselves, friends, are we really growing spiritually or are we growing superficially? And what the hell of Tukutukwai, no wola fadelama, these are good questions to ask in the Invite Tower to Tomoa springtime. That's the first question that I want to ask you today as we enjoy spring this year. Am I growing spiritually or am I growing superficially? Second thing we can get from this story any fruit in my life, good or bad, comes from seeds planted by other people. Now listen very closely here. This is really important, especially the children. The seeds that are planted in your life are either planted by people around you or planted by you yourself. So the story we read says this, somebody plants, someone plants, I underline it for you. Who is that someone? Well, in this story, it's not God. It's referring to a person. It's referring to a someone. So my question is, friends, who are you allowing to plant seeds in your life? Now think about that. Owari wa e fa tangaina e toto ina fatu ilo soi fu atamu fai. Who am I allowing to plant seeds in my life right now? Because it's not just God. It's not just you or the people around you. They're planting seeds, whether good or bad, every day in your lives. Second question is, I want the kind of fruits that the Lord Jesus wants me to have. Amen? Amen? So my question is, do you want that type of fruit that will grow from the seeds that are planted in your lives from someone else? It's important to understand a lot of people are planting seeds in your life right now. I plant seeds in your life. I'm doing it right now. I do it every week. The youth ministry does it every week. Your parents do it every week. We plant seeds of the good news in your life. Can you say good news? Good news. Now, if the whole week you just watch Netflix, listen to podcasts, play games on the internet, you're allowing those people to influence you. That's why they're called Influencers. They're influencing you by planting seeds inside of you. The things they do, the things they say, the things they suggest will influence you one way or another. And that's why I urge you as your pastor, who loves you very much, I urge you to be careful of what you watch, what you listen to, 
and what you read. Don't just allow anybody to plant bad seeds in your life. Can you say bad seeds? Can you say bad seeds? Go away. I'll find it now. Tell Lucy in the Yes, I'll tell you on Facebook. And your face is not in God's book. So say to see Lord if I tell me now. Amen. I'll find out the Fox News, the CNN News, news or if I tell it if you I and if I tell it good news. You're allowing those bad news to plant negative seeds in your life. And that's so dangerous. That is so harmful. Because it won't just harm you, but it will harm your loved ones as well. So ask yourself, who am I allowing to plant seeds in my life right now? You see, let me keep it real for you right now. If other people that's with you are failing to plant good seeds in your life, it's up to you to stop it. Nobody else is going to help you. Nobody else is going to stop it. It's up to you. Right. It's also up to you to choose the good seeds that need to be planted in your life. A feeling feeling of my oil, fat to the day, to tow in and also in for time to fight. In the yard, you're full of mind, full of the lady. You look so full. So this spring, why don't you start planting some good seeds in your own life? I told you, Lord, if seed, what are the seeds? Why not fat to all of them, my young pastor? Well, seeds can be good ideas. Seeds can be good habits. Every time you start a good habit, like reading the Bible one chapter a day, have a prayer life, a habit of, of doing your homework on time, exercising. Everybody can see I need to exercise. Guess what? You're planting a good seed. That's going to bear good fruit later in your life. Can you say amen? amen. You can also plant personal seeds in your character. To talk about to a wiggle and lay. You can plant family seeds in your family. And you can plant career seeds for 10, 20 years down the line. Get a degree, start a business. We have a, 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 a business team right here, a business group, a very good example so that you can take good care of your future family. Of your future family. There's a third lesson we get from this, this reading that we just read. Sometimes we can't see the seeds growing in our lives. Amen. Notice what Jesus said in this verse. The person who planted the seed can't see how it's growing. Because it's hidden under the ground. I turn back to Yeshu in the darkness, in the Bumsa, in Bauruni. The soil is helping the seed to grow. Right. What does this mean, friends? Sometimes it takes difficult, dark times for your seed to grow. Right. But eventually it will. What does that mean? All the seasons of our lives. Are intentional. Amen. They are intentional. The hot summers, the cold winters, springtime, all the seasons of your life are meant to help you grow. Amen. No matter what you go through in life. I don't know what season you're going through right now in your life. But I know that you're going to plant some good seeds in this spring. The fourth lesson that we get from this story from the book of Mark is this. Growth in my life is slow. Growth in your life a lot of times it's slow. And telling this to Puyo Fatu, 
you know, Jah, Jah, all of those are full. And it happens in stages. In fact, so Solomon, the foy, the tupu tupu hai, the tutumu hai, or fua here, my fatu mo mo ne bulu ina. For my little, first it sprouts, mo mo ne tutumu hai, and then it gets stalk, mo yai mo na lau, and then it adds the bud, mo funga mai, and then the bud turns into flower, and then you get the fruit on the matua there, on the site. So it takes time, you guys. There's no such thing as instant spiritual maturity. There's no such thing like instant shiny. No, you just put it in the water. They are. It takes time for us to grow spiritually. And God loves you at every stage of your growth. Can you say amen? That's what Paul said in the book of Philippians. If you look at our our sermon notes. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6, it says, Be confident of this, that he who began the good work within you will continue his work until it's finally finished on that day when Christ Jesus comes back again. Now the best way that you can grow to your fullest potential is to understand what the Bible says about planting seeds in your life. Remember I said that in the beginning, I am Malamalamba, I see the fear. Ah, the little Malamalamba, I see the fear. You know, I'm not going to just put you in with me to throw in a fatu, the little wola, or to manatu, a fuwa mayai, fuwa the little soy fuwa. And there are natural laws, natural laws, and they do not follow for natuba that the Bible tells us about planting seeds. So if you look at your notes, this is the first. This is the first law. It says, everything starts as a seed. To la vono fa na tu mo buna o me o ma la ba e a mata is a fatu as a seed. Every idea o ma na tu ma started as a seed of an idea. Every dream o me na e miti yai started as a seed of a dream. Every achievement that you got. It started as a seed. You started somewhere and you pursued it. Every building you see, somebody had the seed of thoughts in their mind. Your own life started as a seed. This is what the book of Genesis says about creation. If you look back at our notes, it says, Then God said, Let the earth have seed bearing plants. And let trees bear fruit with seeds in them. Then let those seeds produce the same kind of plants and trees that they came from. So the earth was filled with seed bearing vegetation. You see, friends, seeds are God's idea. Can you say seeds? seeds. Come on, y'all. Can you say seeds? seeds. God thought it up. A much of my fatu. Everything in God's creation. Grew from a seed and it continues to grow from a seed. So, the first law in spiritual planting is that everything starts with a seed. So, you gotta plant a seed in your life. If you wanna see any good fruits, physical, spiritual, mental, whatever, at the town of a on a totoin and the fatu delay, the afaya to finamana. Second law, if you look at our notes again, the second law says, a seed has no power until it is planted. A seed has no power. See, no one has to talk. See, no one has to talk. 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 No See, don't love what to talk. Jesus said that in the book of John, chapter 12, verses 24 to 25. Mm -hmm. Unless a grain of wheat is planted and buried in the soil, it cannot reproduce. It will remain only a single seed. But if it dies, it will produce many seeds and much fruit. If you selfishly hold on to your own life, you'll lose it. But if you give up living for this world, You'll gain eternal Amen. life. Amen. I'm going to give you a question right now that can change your life. 
If you really think about it, ask this question of yourself. What do I need to do today in order to get where I want to get to tomorrow? Amen. When I make the town on fire in that soul, or to bow I can never go now now to the guy tire. If you really think about what you want, plan and build systems to get your goal. That's your seed. Get a business, get a great job, get a good degree, graduate from high school. If you want to be a great athlete, you got to plant the seeds of discipline in your sport. Your diet, your exercise, you got to study the game. If you want to serve like Jesus, you got to plant seeds of love. Seeds of peace, seeds of kindness. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You see, if you don't plant the seeds, you're not going to see the harvest tomorrow. I let you tow in now. It's a lesson, it's a lesson. Amen. I prefer this is a lesson in the four of the day. I let you go on to tow in now. The fat on the day. So plant whatever seed you need to plant. Jesus gave you that knowledge. Jesus gave you that power. Take the small steps. Begin a new habit. To talk about the fact of the day, you know, what a tiny name. Plant any tiny seed of change in your life and watch God make it grow. Amen. You're not going to see it change overnight, like the story we read. But it'll start in the dark. You start in the nephew of our how am I going to get there? How am I going to achieve that? But one day, it's going to sprout. My fool of mine, a fool of the day. Now listen, planting any kind of seed is an act of faith. I had to throw in a fat to the day, you know, sorry, fool of, or no fat to the two of the now. Amen. That's what Jesus said. Unless a grain of seed is buried in the ground, it can't reproduce. Now, I want you to write this down if you can. Whenever you have a need, plant a seed. Whenever you have a need, plant a seed. A plan, a goal, a system, habits. Go after what your dreams are. That's the second law of planting seeds in the Bible, y'all. Everything starts with a seed. That's right. But a seed is worthless until you plant it. That's right. When you have a need, plant a seed. Uh, the third law, <coughs> whatever I plant is what I will harvest. Very simple. If I or never now to say Selena. Whatever I plant, that's gonna be my harvest. Or fatu to Torina. Olo said Selena for in and now. This should be common sense, but I've long I've lived long enough to know that common sense is not very common. Amen. I mean if a, if a farmer plants tarot, he's gonna get tarot, not pineapples, amen. So if you plant good thoughts, guess what? Good plans, good thoughts, good habits. You'll harvest great things. Amen. You'll harvest great results. You know, in the creation story, in the book of Genesis, there's a phrase that's repeated over and over again. And I love that book. That phrase is, after its own kind. Mm -hmm. After its own kind. Amen. Amen. What does that mean? When you plant an apple seed, 100% of the time, you will get an apple tree, not an orange tree. Yeah, in Samoa, when we plant papaya seeds, 100% of the time, we will get a papaya tree, not a guava tree. So listen to what Galatians say. Chapter 6, verse 7 in our notes. And it's great if you take this home. Because you can discuss with your family. 
I dare you to share with your kids tonight. Amen. What are the good seeds are you going to plant yeah. in, your, in your spring break? So Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. Do not deceive yourselves. No one makes a fool of God. You will reap exactly what you plan. Amen. Now friends, this principle, whether you believe it or not, whether you understand it or not, it works both ways. So it's good to be in the light. <laughs> you will always reap what you sow in life. Did you say amen? Amen. That means it could be something positive, a positive blessing, or it can be a negative curse Amen. in our lives. Amen. If I go around planting seeds of kindness, seeds of love, seeds of grace, seeds of, of generosity, guess what? That's what's coming back to me. Amen. God will bless you and people are going to give you back kindness, Amen. generosity, grace, and love. Guess what, y'all? And I pray that that's not what you're planting. And it's not because you're getting cursed by God, but because you chose to plant those seeds that you will inevitably harvest. Amen. So let's take a look at our next Bible verse. Some Bible verses that talks about the negative things that we, we plant. Proverbs chapter 13, it says, a stupid person plants discord and conflict by making arrogant assumptions. But those who listen to advice will be wise. Amen. Proverbs 16 also says, Troublemakers plant seeds of strife, and their gossip separates the best of friends. Can you say amen? amen. amen. How about a positive seed? The Bible says this about a positive seed in the book of Hosea. Here we go. If you plant the good seeds of righteousness, y'all, you will harvest a crop of my love. So plow up the hard ground of your hearts. For now is the time to seek the Lord, so that he may come and shower goodness are you like rain? Amen. You see, a little fire in the few I can't. I can't sow irresponsibility and reap success. I can't sow stinginess and reap blessings. Amen. You will reap what you sow, either positively or negatively. So, plant good seeds Amen. this spring. Amen. The fourth law, we're almost, we're, oh, we passed halfway, oh my. Yeah. Fourth, I'm not <laughs> the only one planting in my life. I'm not the only one planting in my life. To that phone of Natua, Luna Farina, Ile. You are reaping both the good and bad from those who went before you and before me. Mm -hmm. Ancestors, family members, other people who've influenced you and I, who've influenced your life. Now think about this, this is really, really important. Your life, your decisions, won't just affect you right now. Right. The seeds you choose to plant now are going to affect future generations as well. Right. Amen. Especially your future family. Right. You have your families right now, parents, and uh, your brothers and your sisters, eventually, you will have your own future family. Right. That should make you really think deeply about the kinds of seeds yeah. you plant now. Because right. it will affect 
your future family. Can you say amen? amen. So friends, plant good seeds this spring. The fifth law, very important. I always harvest more than I plant. I always harvest more than I plant. What does that mean? Tell you to me to say Selena. I know me to go to Tony. Tell you to fuck me young as a sound mind. I always harvest more than I plant. So one mango seed is not going to give me just one mango back. It's going to give me a mango tree that will give me hundreds of mangoes. Amen. And to talk to us, and then now say, yes, it does it. That's what you know. And all the money, yes, you are to have it. And now, my fool, my yes, you are telling. And so, I always get more than I put out. And that means both ways, everyone. If I gossip, people are going to gossip about me. If I do great things, people are going to do great things for me as well. If I mean to people, people are going to be mean to me, mean to you. You cannot violate the laws of the harvest. This is what Mark chapter 4 verse 8 says. Some seed fell on good soil. It came up, grew, and produced a crop, multiplying 30, 60, and even 100 times. So you got to be careful, y'all. That's right. Because this principle will either work for you or against you. Yes, amen. Depending on what kind of seeds you choose to plant in your life. In your life, y'all. So develop habits of kindness. Develop good habits. For my son in law, we know the lay a lot of money. Or the law fund. Yeah, or the lay to the lot of the under the lay. A lot of your fear, but it will only take you more. And then you will get that back. Yes, amen. Here's the sixth law. To not follow no no no. It says, I can increase my harvest by planting more seed. I can increase my harvest by planting more seeds. And tell the fool out to set it in now. But I tell it fat to what it's told now. If I want to have a greater harvest, if I want to have a big harvest, it's real simple. Plant more seeds. Dream big. Dream big. Dream a lot and go after it. If I want more financial blessings, give more. If I want more love, love more. Whatever you need more of, right. plant more seeds of that. Right. You say amen. amen. That's what we have in the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 9, verses 67. It says, remember this, y'all. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each one should give what he's decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. And you say it cheerful. Cheerful. Come on, y'all. Can you say cheerful? Cheerful. So again, very simple. Very common sense. Whoever sows little will reap little. Whoever sows a lot will reap a lot. Amen. You say amen. Amen. Very straightforward. Here's the seventh law. I should always be planting good seeds. I should always be planting good seeds. Now, two hundred to the phone of now, two hundred now, and we feed you at the town of our own to tow in now. We fat to the day. No, we not. A boy, yes, to tow, yes, Lulu, and the city said, Send him back. At the town of our own, and a boy take you, ma. Don't try to wait for a better time. The sooner, the better. Yes, some might say, the word Koyiki, ya. <laughs> but this is what Fayla Umar said. Those who wait for perfect conditions will never plant seeds. And those who look at every cloud will never reap a harvest. If you're waiting for a perfect situation, guess what? When you plant those seeds, friends, I'm telling you now, you probably never will. Get a perfect situation. Yeah. I know so many people who succeeded 
They succeeded because of dark times. They succeeded because they went through the challenges. Even though there's no light at the end of the tunnel, they went and did it anyway. And that's how you succeed. You fail, 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 fail until you succeed. Michael Jordan said that. I, I, I shot so many hundreds and thousands of shots. I failed and failed and failed again. And that's why I succeed. And say amen. To tell only for to the just plant the good news now. Plant the good seeds now. Right. Take small steps to your goals. For money to serve for on the next reading, do your planting in the morning and in the evening too. You never know whether it will all grow well or whether one planting will do better than the other. Amen. For my to Lord, it is a that's right. That's right. Are you actually planting anything? Amen. I think that's worse than planting bad seeds if you're not even trying to plant something. Are you planting seeds of trust? Or are you planting seeds of doubt in your marriage? Are you planting seeds of joy with your children? Or are you planting seeds of anger? Always going at it with one another. Are you planting seeds of love? Or are you planting seeds of argument? Always arguing. You know, the words that we say, the words are like seeds. When it goes, it grows. And we have to be careful of what you say. We have to choose them wisely. Amen. So you should always be planting good seeds. Amen. Our last law from the Bible itself. Finally, here's the eighth principle. This is what it says. To laugh on no fat natural when only there, we are able to tow in no fat or the new we know fat to fat my while waiting for my harvest. I must be patient and not give up. Amen. I will fat a tally more sense in a man. I will only a few more feet. That's right. I will fight it now. Many times, a old mayor died of fat a tally. Amen. And we won't see any fruits for a long time. Right. Many times, the things that we work for in our lifetime, our children will reap. That's right. That's right. Many times, we don't see it in our lifetime. Amen. Like I said in the other law, what you reap will affect your future families as well. Right. But this is what the Bible says, Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, our very last uh, Bible verse. We must not become tired of doing good. We will reap a harvest at the right time if we do not give up. Amen. Friends, we will reap a harvest. So I want to finish up with this question, you guys. Before you plant some new seeds, do you need to do some plowing and weeding first? Do you have to do some weeding right now? Mm. Amen. I leave Yeah, This is what Jeremiah says. Your hearts have become hard, like an unplowed field where weeds have taken over. So plow out the hard ground of your hearts. Do not waste good seed 
by planting a mango seed. What does this mean? What are we going to fight out? Before I can plant good seeds, I got to take out the weeds. Amen? That's right. Amen. I to to I to to I to to Friends, what seeds are you going to plant in your life and in your heart this spring? Amen. Remember, if you have a need, plant a seed. In the powerful name of Jesus, let the church say amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father, I pray that together as a church family, we would begin a season in the springtime of planting. Planting new habits, new attitudes, new commitments. And if our heart has grown cold, if our heart has grown hard, and the ground needs to be repowered, and we need to do some weeding, may we do that this week, Lord, in our spring break. Friends, if, if you can pray with me in your hearts, if you never opened your life to Jesus Christ, pray these words softly in your heart. Jesus Christ, come into my life now. I want to know your plan for my life, Jesus, as much as I know how. I want to open my life to your love. Fill me with your love. I want to learn to follow you and trust you. Thank you for dying for me. I want to turn from my sins and turn to you, Jesus. In your name I pray. Let the church say amen. Amen. And I welcome everybody. I know who that told no for that to know how to do. Yeah, and, and, and help us with the next song. It's called I Believe. I Believe. Time for the day with that to that for now. Yeah, uh, that to your for my.
And we say thank you. We say goodbye to all of our pains. We say goodbye to all of our sorrows. We say goodbye to all of our challenges. All of the to Luma Malfatu, to it I will feel. Mount to Toina Fatu the day. In love for my young Paya, my Fasu Suina, in a full money for the lay. A more my love in now. A peony for the follower, the perfect of Malaki. The Talaina the Nami, my Sasa, my Fabiana, I take that to. The Talaina Fabuia, Ilato Umalava. Let the church say amen. amen. Thank you, y'all. You may be seated. I don't want church to finish now. I want church to be going, but we have another program. I too want to know the office out. One more time, y'all. And I do want to know the youth pastor and the administration and so my keke, but so my titi, yeah, more follow for lama, and we fat my eye for that to some I bet you for that to our and so my youth pastor. Put your hands together for the wonderful word that Pastor has delivered today. scriptures that were shared here but you got to remember one thing in life whatever seeds that you sow Amen. is what you reap That's right. and the key element of the mature when people talk about what was the sermon all about turn to your neighbor say neighbor be patient with what you harvest even if you harvest the wrong thing don't go back and argue with that person somebody say hallelujah, hallelujah. what you do you plow That's right. the word plow means repentance Hello there. Let's say or to Matan and God. Then I get for him and God. See, amen. Don't get mad at him. Maybe that person don't know as the scriptures was written right here today. That person sold bad seeds and bad seeds and take you over the bed, poor boy. Amen. Get yourself out of it before it's too late. Amen. And when he comes to you, you hold that person's hand and you say, In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We kneel before you. We want to keep this friendship, bring the light into our hearts, mind, body, and soul, so we can continue the good seeds in our life. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. And welcome to Christian Worship Center University. A lot of questions I was listening say, why? There was more than 18 scriptures that was laid down right here. Amen? Amen. And the purpose of this teaching Amen. Amen. And right after this, we want to take a 10 minute break with our, our refreshment ministry. Turn to your neighbor and say, Neighbor, we do have a refreshment ministry. Amen. But remember, we're giving 10 minutes, but Kenny said 9. But my clock said 12. Somebody say, Hallelujah. Amen. We want to give a little Father, we thank you for the word today. Using our senior pastor, teaching your gospel about sowing seeds in our life. Everything that we sow as he preached and he teaches is from you. You are the soil that makes this thing grow within us, which is life. Anoint each and every soul that is here today. That is your word that we are here to deliver. Bless them from the top of their head to the sole of their feet, that they can go tell somebody. Because this is your will, that everybody in this world who don't know you will know. In Jesus' mighty name, let the church say, Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> 